I will call him Victor. So Victor here took about 10 hours to print, and in that entire time, I didn't have a single printer error. So what is the key to my success? Well, I can't promise results for everybody, but I'll give you a quick overview of the hardware and software changes that I made that certainly helped. So we'll start with the extruder first. I changed two things on the extruder. The first was during the length calibration, instead of calibrating for the center of the gears, I actually calibrated to the bottom of the gears. So this gave it a little better chance of uh, the filament actually feeding and grabbing by the, getting grabbed by the gears. The second thing I did was I redesigned the filament sensor cover to accept a pass-through coupler. So this allowed me to take that little white uh, piece of Teflon out of there and now this tube goes straight down and takes its place. So of course you know you have to scoop out the uh, the inside of this to look like a little funnel just like before but it actually passes down and it stops where that white Teflon used to stop. Okay now we'll move on to the multi-material unit by itself. Uh, first we'll start with the selector. Now uh, previously in my other video you saw me move this sensor up uh, to prevent fa false triggering on thin tips. Uh, I've since moved it back to the recommended Prusa setting uh, simply because that was allowing I had too much room for uh, detritus little scraps of, of filament to get packed in there and false trigger the sensor. So it seems to be a little more reliable back in its previous spot at least for now that's how I have it. So this is default. I also put my blades back to my blade back to default. Uh, if you watched the previous video, I actually made the blade double sided so it cut both ways. Um, I since had to change a heart on that and put it back the way it was originally intended, thinking that maybe down the line, Prusa will be using this some way, the right way, whatever. And um, so the only thing I changed from stock is I used super glue to hold it in place while I put the cover on to make sure it didn't shift and make sure it was lined up properly. Um, other than that, so, so this is stock and this is stock. So the only thing I changed that you're looking at on the selector is I added um, this filament brush. Uh, it's just a couple thin pieces of like, um, like a, a stiff TPU. It's uh, by Ninja Tech. It's called, what the hell is it called? Armadillo. And uh, you can probably, it's thin enough where you could probably use anything else. Uh, I don't have the STLs for this published yet. I do have the STLs on Thingiverse for the cover. So I'll publish that. This, I'm not sure if this actually helps or not, so I'm not going to publish this yet. I'm still kind of testing it out. So, so far, only two mods. Filament cover with the pass-through thingy and a little sweeper. So nothing drastic, but I think that, that sensor cover really helped quite a bit. We now move over to the root of many of my problems. I think many of my problems are caused by this. Na -na. This sucker, the idler assembly, originally Black Pet G. Uh, yours might be orange. Yours is probably orange. Since I had ordered the black kit, mine is black. What was happening was the stepper motor was heating up. And originally, remember, I don't know if you watched the previous video or not, but if you did, I thought these two screws were backing out. Turns out that wasn't the case. What was actually happening, this was heating up, was making this plastic soft, and it was losing it, the screws were losing their grip on the shaft of the motor, and it was allowing slop in this assembly. So then I was either, it was either, um, at the worst case, it was actually actually selecting the wrong filaments, so it was actually grabbing on the wrong filaments. Um, mild case was it was slightly off, and then the bearings weren't in quite the right position, and they weren't gripping the filament quite enough, and I was getting ground filament. It was just stripping filament and stuff like that, because there wasn't enough pressure pushing down on the filaments. And that actually got worse as time went by, because I was... You know, I would check it once in a while. I noticed these were loose, and I would tighten them more, and tighten them more, and tighten them more. Because of the way this is built, as the screws are pushing down on the shaft, it's pulling the plastic back away towards the screw heads. And that just happens to be the opposite direction of the filament one load bearing. So, as this plastic was getting soft, and I was tightening 
those screws, it was actually pulling this whole assembly back and making this bearing, even when it was in the right position, put less pressure on the filament. And I was starting to get fil you know stripped filament a lot on the first couple of um, first couple of positions. And it was all because this thing was getting melty and soft. So I printed a new one in polycarbonate, and as you can see by Victor, it seems to have worked. And then finally on the hardware side, you see I got rid of the funky take-up mechanism for the spool holders, and I'm just letting the filament free flow into the tubes. I have shortened tubes. Now this is an ideal, and you can probably still use the spool holders or something like that with a tube, but for me, I don't know if you remember in my last video, I mentioned that those mechanisms have never caused a problem for me um, as far as getting ta getting uh, like tied in a knot or tangled. Well, they did. So I took those off just to eliminate even less friction and less knotting. And, you know, it ran smooth for 10 hours. So I guess this is working at least with three filaments. Okay, that's it for the hardware. Now on to the software. Uh, we don't care about print settings. They're irrelevant for this. Um, let's go to the filament settings, advanced, where everybody's been playing with these numbers and sharing numbers. Now this uh, 19 and 22, they're for loading, and I don't really think they matter a hill of beans. Um, I had changed them just because I saw somebody else with these numbers and I was grasping at straws, but I don't think they matter or anything. Unloading speeds. I have this cranked at 140 and 90, so I am like ripping that filament right the hell out of the hot end um, at, at you know, light speed. So that I think is more key than anything. Uh, these are the other changes. Number of cooling moves, three. I used the um, first cooling move is 20 and the last is 10. So it's actually cooling it quite a bit and I mean quite it, it, relatively fast and uh, three dips into the uh, cooling tube. My ramming settings, I have it four seconds. Um, the slope down here might be slightly different than stock, only because I was playing with stuff. I don't think it's too terribly relevant. Um, the amount of time is probably the big thing, and maybe this push, I don't know. Uh, you know, this is black arts, but for me, this worked. So this, number four seconds, and this shape worked for me for ramming. So, key changes. The, the ramming change, 140, 90, 20, and 10. Those were the changes. Now, one other important change. So that affects the shape of the tip or whatever, which I'll show you in a minute. One other important change on the printer settings tab. I don't know if you guys ventured in over there or not. Single extruder multi-material setup. Click on that. Originally, extra loading distance. This was actually set to negative 13. And if you read, it says when set to zero, the distance of the filament is moved from parking position during load and exactly the same as it was moved back during the unload. When positive, it is loaded further. If negative, the loading move is shorter than the unloading. So this is actually shorting the distance uh, back to the hot ends by 13 millimeters. So I changed that to zero and I've had zero loading problems now. So this actually seemed to make the multi-material unit and the hot ends, the ex real extruder, work synchronously. Like one was feeding while the other was grabbing. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. It was like an Olympic uh, events, you know, with the, the, the relay, with, uh, you know, passing one thing to a runner, the, the, the thing with the, the other thing, the runners, you know what I'm talking about. It was wonderful. It almost made me want to cry. It was so nice. So this seemed to really help. So that and partially my, those um, filament settings here seem to be the magic sauce, plus, you know, my hardware modifications to make things run smoothly. Now, you're probably wondering, Brian, okay, you got all these numbers. What the hell do your tips look like? Are they this like, are they like beautiful pointy little tips? I'll show you. Okay, now let's check out my filament tips. Here's the gold. Here's the white. 
So they're not really what you would expect, are they? They're kind of like spears, like Britney Spears maybe, like not sharp and a little warped. Here's the black. So there you go. Yep. So they're not exactly what you would think the perfect tip would look like. Let me put it over. Yeah, let me hold it up like that. So you would think it would be more stubby. And they seem to have this little bend at the end. But that doesn't matter. It's thick enough, although it's pointed, this pointy end is thick, is stout enough for the gears to grab onto, I guess. And it helps everything flow through. So believe it or not, this shape seems to work out well. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to keep this short. I just wanted to keep you guys abreast of my progress and let you know that I did get this working. Now, since I'm a masochist, I think I'm probably going to move over and try to get a pet G print to go on this. What do you think? What do, what do you think my odds are? I give it about 15% because, you know, pet G and stringing, hmm, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But I'm going to give it a shot and I'll let you guys see how it works. Talk to you later. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.